All right, gang. I made it to the boneyard. Picked up a couple of Tecumish carburetors. And we're going to check them out see which one's best and clean it up. But while I was there, I sort of kind of picked up a Wisconsin V4. This one has electric start. This is a parts engine that got thrown in on the deal because this one has an electric start. Well, now I have two. <laughs> this one has a stuck valve and it has no spark. So getting ready to drain the oil out so I can get the oil filter off and see if it isn't something simple, just like uh, dirty points, hopefully. But we'll get into that one real quick, see if we can get spark back. That's really all I'm concerned with at the moment. Um, I say I have a stuck valve. It is the exhaust valve on the number four cylinder right here. Um, I've not checked the rest of them. I stuck my bore scope in there and that valve's just not wanting to behave. So I doused the cylinders with uh, fogging oil, stable fogging oil, and I'll pay attention to the points a little bit. I'm not going to put a whole lot of time into this one. Then uh, we'll get back over here, turn the camera back on, and see if we can't get this thing running on its own so we can get dropped back into the Wheel Horse Raider and get that project done and out of the way and take it over to Dave's, have Dave go ahead and get her up on the full sale site. So this one is crank start only. It will be electric and crank start after I get it running to begin with. Um, the engine is free and clear. It's Just a second here, let me prop you guys up. I'll show you. too much because I've got the screws out of the Fairbanks Morse um, magneto and if it turns out that this magneto isn't any good there is another one on that one so between the two hopefully we'll have one good one so let me tinker with this. If I find anything interesting, and I'll uh, pop the camera on. Um, we'll see if it's just cleaning the points. Hopefully that's all it's going to be. But we'll find out soon enough. And then we'll get on to the little Tecumseh. So hang on. All right, gang. I took the cap off. And I also took the case off so that I can get to the points which are back here and then the mag itself is wound here and there's a brass tab that comes down and in the top of the cap a little hard to see it's got a little bump at the top of the cap there's a brass rod that goes through there makes contact with that um, plate that goes to the coil so I cleaned all that up cleaned the carbon dot on the end of the cap um, cleaned each of the contacts they looked pretty good and I cleaned the points themselves I have not cranked it yet to see if we have uh, spark yet so we're going to do that together I'll stick the oil filter back on interesting oil filter by the way has a pin hole there and that pin goes up injects the oil into the top of the filter and then it just filters down through the media pretty neat there we go okay 
don't know where a good spot is to put you guys. So, let's see if we can't do it just right here. Let's see if we've got spark. Hopefully we do. Plugs are out, by the way, as you guys can, as you can see. Let's see what we got. You guys will be able to see, and I won't. That's funny. Okay, I do not see a spark. So, and it may be, I don't have a good ground. Could be any number of things. I'm going to keep at this for just a little bit longer. And, uh... There's my kill right there. That's what shuts it off. But I'm gonna tinker just a little bit more on it. Get it back up here where I can reach it. Okay. If I end up tearing this back apart, I'll show you guys what's in there that uh, I was talking about. monster uh over 50 horsepower not sure of the exact horsepower until i run the numbers it's a v as in victor e as in edward four four size is three by one and a quarter spec number six one nine zero looks like another four and then serial number 1871965. Um, not sure of the year of this engine, but I'll do some uh, research after I get done editing this video and pulling the numbers. Um, we'll find out exactly what the horsepower is them in the 90s, right before they uh, stopped manufacturing these engines. They were almost 70 horsepower. I mean, that's easily Volkswagen Beetle territory without any effort whatsoever. So instead of just sitting here mumbling, I'm going to get to it, see if I find anything. I'll bring you back. All right, gang, I took it back apart. And I'll show you the different components here we've got the pickup here and the pickup here this brass pin makes contact with the tab which is on the mag windings and here's your points down here and I went ahead and ran clean cleaned those some more um, loosened cleaned and then retightened here uh, the gap is properly set as far as I can tell the condenser is good so this will be attempt number two to get spark back um, and also if you look the tip of this has a little bit cut off of it right there well the button or the, this pickup pin right here was just barely touching it uh, didn't have enough spring tension and it was pushed over that way too far so I tweaked that a little bit and bent it out just a little more so that it makes good contact with that pickup there so we're gonna put it back together and see if we've got spark all right we got things buttoned back up let's see if we've got spark now find a good place to sit you guys let me see here. Hopefully we've got spark. Just trying to find a good place to there we go. Ah. See if the engine will stay still while I crank. you 
you guys saw that. We've got Spark back. Yay. <clears throat> All right, now we're just gonna do a little bit of lubricating on the carburetor and I'm not going to pump any fuel into it. I'll just gravity feed a little bit into the bowl. Of course, I've got to get this muffler, this can off of here. Hmm. And we've still got this one valve that's not closing over here. It's got these little inspection windows that you can pop open to check, make sure that your uh, fins are clean. One on either side. Pretty cool. Anyway, let me tidy things up. Get this clamped down. Um, I've also got to refill it with oil. Looks like it let out three, possibly four quarts. Um, we'll just fill it till it's full. The <laughs> the fill. The fill is here. You check it way down here where it's darn near impossible to get in. But you can see right there, the low and the full. So, get all that situated. And we'll see if we can't get this thing to pop off a little bit. Alright, I do not know what to expect. Dribbled a little bit of fuel down in its gullet with this. I'm going to close that up. That's just a little primer cup. And then I added some fuel here. So got our air cleaner over here. I'm going to go ahead and pop this off. Just get that out of the way. Looks like I can stand to clean that out just a little bit there close it off there we go you guys are just kind of going for a ride in my hand took the choke cable off, put a different choke cable on that I can just hit real quick once it pops over. Uh, and this valve that was stuck on number four, I think it was, yeah. Number four exhaust valve, it popped back down. Just from me spraying a little bit of uh, Stabil. So, got a couple of clamps on the engine. The apprehension gets me especially with four cylinders instead of just uh, one or two so let me I want to set the camera on something so pull the toolbox over let you guys watch from afar just curious what's going to blow out of the exhaust when it takes off I'm ready if you are Get a little bit of starting fluid also. Put that down nice. Alright. Hold on to whatever you're holding on to. Oh, I heard it pop.
I'll grab a different crank handle. Hang on. What's happening, gang? All right. Um, taking a pause on this because it's not priority. I did get it to pop, so I know that it will most likely run. Um, but we're going to set this on the back burner. I'll get it down on the pallet and tucked away so it's out of the way. But it won't be forgotten. So those of you who are hoping that you'd hear this running, sorry. But we are still going to try to get an engine going. And that would be right here. We got the carburetors for them from Almost Heaven, Lower Junkyard. Um, got one carburetor over here on the bench that we're going to see if it's going to be a viable the needle and everything came out and I've already cleaned it up it's right here the metering needle but these two are stuck together so I'll work on that a little bit but I'm just want to soak it down some with a little bit of uh, magic sauce which is not right in front of my face. Okay, here we go. Uh, for those of you who think that I've got my voice back, this is a high concentration <laughs> voice. Um, I'm having to consciously lower the octave of my voice to have a voice. If I talk at my regular um, we are, there's nothing, there's nothing there, so, or it's pretty bad. We take a look in the hole here, we've got a decent amount of rust, hopefully it's not going to be so bad that, uh, we can't get it cleaned up and make this a viable carburetor. If this one's not going to work out for us, we do have a, a second one just a little bit different than this one but we get this fuel bowl off that was easy yep not too bad see here we'll get that cleaned out we're doing it Bruce Pender style here using carb cleaner let me get my toolbox closer to me so I can get the needle out and clean all that stuff up it's not horrible I've seen worse here and do some dry brushing before I spray it just to get some of the bigger chunks off. Get some air. I'm either picking up my Dutz Alice Ultima that I purchased last fall. I'm either picking it up um, today or possibly Saturday. Uh, missing the engine. The rest of it is there, so it'll either make a good parts tractor or it'll make a good... Z. I try to raise my voice. And it goes cracky again. Um, it'll either be a good tractor or it'll be a parts tuner. Okay, that's loose. So we're going to run that in. This is our idle. 
circuit. It is pretty ugly down in there. I don't know if you guys can see down in here. It's pretty ugly. Before I take that needle out, let me see if I can't get in there and do a little bit of rotor rooting. And missing one of my picks. Hold on. We find it. That was about two inches away from where it's supposed to be. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, that was plugged. I'm taking just going around the uh, main emulsion tube here. Let me tap it a little bit. A little bit of crud there. I think I'm going to go in from this side and blow down. Try to blow that crap out from the inside out. So we can get this in camera view too. You ready? See what blows out of here. Hose is not cooperating with me. Here we go. Whoop. Almost. Okay, here we go. I still see some junk in there. Drop the hose. Well, it's free and clear. some carb cleaner in there it should come out you see right inside uh oh there goes <laughs> hang on lordy okay I'm gonna spray into the emulsion tube and you should see it come out right there Keep your eyeballs peeled. We got it. It's definitely coming out. All over the camera. <laughs> Sorry, I was out of camera view there. I was just making sure that I didn't blow a bunch of stuff on the camera again. Choke's doing what it's supposed to do. Let's put a couple little drops of oil. Got a piece of wicking material here. And a little oil down here. Good enough. We'll come up here. Same thing. Got these little felt pads. Just gonna load them up so they've got some lubrication on them. Come back down here. All right. Oops. Come here, screwdriver. There you are. Now let's go ahead and take out the uh, idle screw. First thing we're going to do is see how far down it goes. So there's half, there's one, there's half. It feels like that's just about it. Nope, it went a little more. There's two, two and a half. Wow. Three, four. All right, I'm just going to back it out and clean it out. We'll set that once we get the carburetor back onto or onto this HH100 engine. Almost looks like it's bent, but I don't ever worry about bottoming these out because these always have a shoulder on them. So 
Yeah, we'll shoot a little bit of, it looks pretty clean in there and the gasket looks okay too. Shoot a little bit of carb cleaner down in that hole. Make sure it comes out up here. Yep, just see it. Ready? It's doing what it's supposed to. And I always come back and blow everything off with air afterwards. Okay. Let's take a look at that. Shut off. I don't know if that seal is going to be viable or not. We'll find out here shortly. We'll get out our uh, vacuum pump and see if we can See if we can get a seal on that with a needle and seat after I get all that cleaned up. Well, that's all I'm going to do to this. Choke open, choke closed. Springs, sp springing, doing what it's supposed to. Same thing with the throttle. It's doing what it's supposed to. So. That looks just fine. We'll go ahead and run that back in. And I will see you guys over at the engine. So hang on. And we've got some people outside trimming some trees down. Um, I primed the carburetor and it overfilled. So that tells me needle and seat's not doing its job. So I just shut the fuel off right here. We're getting ready to crank it over, see if we can't get it to uh, bark to life. Um, I do not have, I've got this screw set, I do not have the bottom screw set. I'm just wanting to make sure that this thing's going to run for us, and if it does, then the 18, should I clamp down the Wisconsin in case this one decides it wants to dance a bit? Yeah, I think I will. Let's crank her over. You gotta say it with me. Three, two, one. Contact. Fingers crossed. We got a runner. <laughs> Fired right off first time. Let's bring that choke off a little bit. <laughs> Let's increase the RPM just a little. Sounds like it's gonna run though, doesn't it folks? Here we go.
That didn't take much of a fight at all, now did it? Yeehaw. Okay, we got her running. Fuel's on. It's a slow leak on that uh, carb. Let me get this shut back off. This shut off valve's about had it. There we go. Stick this back on. I'm not sure where the uh, kill is. I think it might be right there. So that's the red wire. Follow that around. These are both red. And one of these charges and one one has a black stripe. One's just solid red. Let's see. Yeah, that's insulated, so that's where the kill goes. So let me start it back up and just make sure that's where it's going to kill it. Ready? Let's start it up again see how it does on a slightly warmed up start. right there so all I'll have to do is just attach the kill wire from the key switch on the wheel horse and I'll finish dialing the carburetor in I've got to order an air filter for it but how about that it is ready to go back on the wheel horse I'm happy about that well guys, kind of a long one, but I haven't been putting a whole bunch out, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Give me that big old thumbs up. Um, I do have an appointment for my ear, with my ear, nose, and throat on June 5th. That was the earliest I could get in, um, but my primary care will be taking a intermediary look at my throat on the 2nd of May. So, you may see something that will help out the ear, nose, and throat, or help me out directly. But, there we go. It's a runner. Now I can pop that uh, Harbor Freight 14 horse off and find out why the electric start isn't working anymore. Probably just from sitting outside, be my guess. But, alright. The HH100 alive again appreciate each and every one of you for being patient with me getting videos out and also for just being that great group of people that you are i promise you see you when i see you later i'm out of here